Hello, my name is Rick. Welcome to my channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day and practicing guitar a lot. So today, let's learn this together. <laughs> So Seek and Destroy, Metallica, first album, Kill em All. Uh, cool, uh, old school metal, what can you say? So let's get right to it. Um, you're going to want to uh, mute with your right hand, or again, your picking hand, if you're left-handed, uh, the open A string, twice. Then you go to the seventh fret on the G string, and you're going to go like this. So what you're doing is you're playing the seventh fret on the G string, you're hammering on to eight, and then you're gonna re-pick the seven again here. So it's like, hammer on, re-pick. So the first part here is, and the next lick is very similar. Um, but you only pick the A string here once. Uh, mute it, and then you go to the seventh fret of the D string, hammer on to eight, and then re-pick the seventh fret. So this part's the same, you could say. It's like, and I think index and middle fingers are the most logical there. Uh, so, so far you get, and then open A string again, Go to the uh, eighth fret on the A string, eight to seven. So it's open eight seven. All muted with your right, hand, with your picking hand. <laughs> I'm gonna assume most people are probably right-handed, but there's I don't wanna, uh, you know, uh, leave out the left-handed people. Jimi Hendrix, of course, right? So um, now there, there's a couple ways you can play this. I think uh, using your third finger here twice is kind of cool. It's comfortable, so on the zero, eight, seven, sets you up for your index finger here, which you need next. Um, it's funny though, for the longest time I played with my little finger, which the logic there would be is that you're doing a one finger, one finger per fret kind of rule, but for now let's just stick with this. So, uh, so, so far you got. And then this part here is kind of cool, very symmetrical. Uh, fifth fret on the D string, seventh fret on the A, and then just go to the uh, go this direction, which is higher in pitch. <laughs> Down visually is higher in pitch. Um, fifth fret on the G, and then seventh fret on the D. So basically, you're going five seven on the D and the A strings, five seven on the G and D strings. So I'll play it a couple times so you can get used to it. So it's. be a good little piece of practice. Um, I'm just doing all down strokes here. I think so far the whole thing is, let's see. Yeah, all down strokes. So that's the whole riff. Oh, by the way, you can add a little bit of vibrato on there, it's cool. Um, lick in here that just goes uh so what that is is a ninth fret on the g string with your third finger go nine to seven on the g then go nine on the d back to seven on the g so you get this little so that part and then you're going to descend this part, which is nine, eight, seven on the D, and then slide to five, still on the D string. So, so that whole part slow. And 
then I'll show you one more riff. Um, then I'll kind of explain why I'm only showing you two riffs. <laughs> so uh, it's part of my philosophy for uh, a fair amount of lessons at certain points uh, on a student's guitar journey. So this riff here though, um, I played a couple different ways. Um, I think you could too, I'll explain that in a second here, but the main, the, the, the notes will be the same of course, but uh, low E, just chug along there, mute, palm mute, one, two, three, four. And then you're going to bar the fifth fret on the A and the D strings here. And then you're gonna go to the seventh fret and do the exact same thing, bar on the A and D strings here. And you just go back and forth like that twice, so. So you got this, one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four, again. Uh, and then this little four note descending riff. Seven, five on the A string, and then seven, six on the low E. So the whole riff kind of slow would be. Um, sometimes I hammer on here, like. I've even slid the chord before. It's kind of cool. I don't think uh, I don't think Kirk does that though. <laughs> but I should watch some old videos again and watch and see. So yeah, but yeah, I think the main riff is just pick all the notes. If anybody knows, if you have seen any variations of that, like sliding hammer on, feel free to let me know in the comments. That'd be cool. Uh, those are the kind of details that you know sometimes make a difference. Sometimes I don't think it matters. Um, you know, we could talk about that for eons, I suppose. <laughs> But um, so here's one of the philosophies. I'm going to do a whole video about this in general. Um, but um, if I were to show you the whole song right now, first of all, some of you probably wouldn't have clicked on the video. Uh, be honest. <laughs> People like short, bite-sized pieces. Uh, the second thing is is that um, I think depending where you are in your journey, boy, there's a couple things I could talk about here. Um, yeah, I'd much rather have a student learn one or two cool rock riffs that they're excited about, they know they can do, it's not overwhelming, and they actually learn something that week. Uh, versus if they look at the whole song and there's like eight parts, like, oh man, first of all, they, one, they might not even start, and two, they might start it, but then they're like, oh, this is like daunting, you know? And it's it's kind of interesting. So for me, I have a pretty good amount of patience. Um, I mean, I've read books like War and Peace <laughs> somehow, um, but at the same time, I like to watch, you know, funny two minute videos too. So I think it kind of depends what mood you're in, kind of your personality, maybe it depends on where you are in life. Um, so anyway, some of these videos I am, am intentionally doing shorter as I'm talking here and the time goes. <laughs> so this isn't gonna be a deterrent for this particular video. Um, but yeah, there's so much you can learn and just have fun learning a, a, you know, a new riff that does something that you haven't done before. So, um, yeah, so on this one, if you learn, you know, a cool fingering you haven't done before and you're working on your muting and you got a little vibrato, hey, you, you walked away with something, hopefully. Um, granted, if you're gonna be playing in a band, of course you wanna learn full songs, you know. Um, but one little detail there you can think about is that if, uh, let's say you're playing in a band, and you often see this in songs where like, uh, where there's a cool riff and then the rest of the song might just be like, you know, and all of a sudden they go in some cool, you know, and then there's the cool riff that you wanted to learn. And some songs it's even like there's one cool riff and then there's three or four parts that they're just playing simple chords. So then it's like kind of a, what would you call it, ROI, return on your investment <laughs> time-wise. Like, you know, how much time do you want to put into learning something that's not getting you much uh, better faster. So again, I'll probably do a whole video on that again as I'm rambling here, but um, I think there is great value in learning pieces of songs is kind of the takeaway. So um, yeah, that's my little spiel for now. <laughs> post, post Metallica riff spiel. Um, yeah, so have fun playing this. Um, there's other cool parts later again. We don't do the whole song some other time, but uh, or maybe I'll do. Creeping Death, one of my favorite Metallica riffs. 
Alrighty, have fun with it and we'll see you soon. Thanks.